is Sonia with Artsy Solutions, and welcome to the second episode of Junk Journal with me, uh, Let's Use Some Digitals. And this one is from Tanya Samuels on Let's Design Creative. Um, I decided to do like, use one page and create something just using the images on that one page. And I made this little pocket. Um, it has a, it has a gusseted, it's a gusseted pocket. So, um, I used a gorgeous image from uh, one of her pages and I used that as the center or the focal point, this beautiful shoe. And this is actually a pocket right here, so you can put something down in there. And um, it, has, it has a gusseted opening and I've got several pieces of ephemera in here. And a lot of these are from multiple digitals. Um, I'll have a list of all of them. Memories, I think Love Notes, and I forgot the other one, but I got, I'll have it mentioned and listed down in the description. And um, basically I just took images from that one sheet of paper, uh, for mainly for this right here, and um, then added some ephemera from her other kits and stuff. So you had this little envelope, and you can just tuck this down in here like that. And um, this is a separate envelope, but I created like a little storage area for, um, or a journal writing area. And you can just write some stuff there, and you can write some stuff in here. And then this just flips back down and it connects with these Velcro, this Velcro closure. And I connected it just to this one envelope right here. And then, like I said, this flips back down like that. And then here's a gorgeous image of a gentleman that she had. And I just added it to a postcard that she had. And I just glued these two together to make it look like it was an original postcard. But it wasn't. I just had to kind of wrinkle up the edges and distress it and stuff like that to make it look like it was an actual postcard. And then we've got some of these clear, um, this little tag, and I'll have a little TikTok, um, no, no, actually I'm going to, I'll do a video on how I made these, a YouTube video. And there's a little pocket right here, and you can put something down in there, and it's got like some vellum and some um, little scraps of paper and stitching and stuff like that. And like I said, I'll have a video showing you how I made this. And then... Um, we have a journal card, and so all of that, I'm just going to put that, I'll put that back in there in just a minute, and um, it closes, you know, like so, and um, I use a lot of her t techniques, because in her journals, t Tanya Samuels, typically she'll have, um, for her frames, I think they're from like die cut negatives, and then she has her tape, uh, I didn't have the same color ink that she had. Uh, it's the Tim Holtz, I forgot what color she uses. Mine is darker, but still, it, you just put it on some mask, uh, not mask, scotch tape. And then it makes it look like it's vintage tape. But I didn't have the same color that she used, but I still use the same thing. And a lot of what I have on here is like within her style, because um, I love her style. <laughs> so, and then you flip it over. Um, and what this is basically going to be is like a insert. It's going to go in a journal. Let me make sure I'm in frame. It's going to go in a journal like so. It's going to flip down. So I kept this little piece right here. And so um, we have this little tuck spot right here. And then I have another one of those cute little uh, pockets uh, or tags. It's like a double-sided shabby sheet tag. Let me put that down in there. And then I also made, and this, you have a pocket right here as well. So a pocket here, here, and here. Oh, and I forgot I had this little tuck spot over here. Let me take this. I for completely forgot I even had this as a tuck spot right here too. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, this is like a little uh, journal writing spot. And I have like a lot of clear shabby chic ephemera on here and all i did was just took some acetate not acetate but um 
transparency film because I didn't have any at stake. And then I just, um, I glued on this, just some regular white cardstock and then some collaging and added a little button or whatever. And I'll have a process video on all this. And then, um, so you have, you have your front and your back and then our closure, uh, which is just some muslin. And then you have some um, journal writing space. And I added some fabric right there. But like I said, I'll have more detail on this um, in another video of how I made these. So, um, but yeah, this is just going to be a, um, a flip. It's going to flip down and up. You'll just add it to your journal. And then uh, once it flips, then you can add your stuff in there. So let me just go ahead and show you how I made it. Today I just want to show you how you can just take one piece of paper, pretty paper, that has like various images on it. Like this one has a gorgeous shoe with like the flowers and different things. And then you come down here and you have this cute tag or ticket. And, and there's just various images that you can use with different things. You can get all of it from just one image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a um, like an envelope. And the center of the envelope, I'm going to use this image. And then I'm going to take bits and pieces, like some of the words and different things, just from this one page and embellish that envelope. And this particular page comes from, it's a digital kit off of Etsy from Let's Design Creative um, called Memories. And I've got, I'm getting ready to work on her kit. I've got a few of her kits actually, <laughs> and I'm going to make a journal. But anyway, I'm just going to focus on just this one page for today. So what I've got is um, my pretty paper, and then I have a die cut negative. And I'm going to, this is going to be like the background, the photo. It's it's going to be a pocket, but it's this shoe is going to be the background image that I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to center this as best I can and get it straight to where this is like straight on the paper. And um, I'm just going to go around the edge so I can know like where to cut it out at. But before I cut it out, um, I'm going to be applying some um, transparent paper, transparency film. And you can use acetate or some type of plastic or something, you know. Okay, so that's good enough right there. So this way I know exactly where I'm going to cut it out at. So I'm just going to go ahead and do just that. But, oh, I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> Don't do it like I did. As I was tracing around where to cut it out at, I got part of the ink mark on here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image out first, which is fine because when um, it won't really show the part that I'm getting cut out, it's not going to really show... Um, on that image that I'm the inner portion of it it's not going to show right here once I put this frame over top of it but the part that's getting cut out <laughs> if that makes any sense I don't know <laughs> it's hard for me to describe stuff guys so I'm sorry okay so I can use this ticket uh, let me just kind of cut that to the side I can use this ticket as part of some ephemera to add on to um, the envelope that I'm going to be making. Okay, so I'm going to carefully cut this out on the line. And I hope I got it straight. I might, When I trace it, I may not have gotten it like super straight, which is fine too because it's going to be hidden behind the frame, so that's fine. Cut that on the line. And set that to the side. Let me just look at this again just to make sure. Okay, so this is going to be going like that. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to add the acetate on here first. And like I said, it's going to become... A, um, it's going to be a pocket, so I'm going to need this front part um, 
open so that this image will still show behind it but um, we'll have the acetate kind of protecting it if you know what I mean so I'm just going to set this image and I will take it over to the side for a moment I'll just put it over here somewhere and um, now like I said we've got some cute um, we have some pretty words and things We've got this pretty flower that I could fussy cut out also um, to kind of decorate the envelope. And it's like I said, it's amazing what you can use with one sheet of paper, one eight and a half by eleven size sheet of paper. Just using really pretty images. And just try to get this upper part of the flower. Fussy cutting is not my best thing, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm just going to fussy cut this image out. And I did leave like a little margin around it, but because I wanted to make sure that I include every single piece of this image on here of the flowers. I didn't want to get too close and then like cut into the flower and the leaves and things like that from this this floral picture right here. Very, very pretty. Okay, so we can use that. And let's see. We can use this word Syracuse. Um, I think I'm going to use my paper trimmer on that because I don't want to mess that up. And there are other cute little things on here too, like this vintage looking tape. We're going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And another little tip that you could use, um, if I would have printed this out on vellum, that would have been even better because this would have looked transparent, but I mean, that's still fine, even like this. And I'm probably going to use that as like a piece of tape or something. We'll see. Um, that's cute. I might be able to use that. I don't know. We're going to keep different pieces here and there. And then I like that right there. Um, these words, you can see like it's a collage of different pieces of paper. I can collage onto the uh, envelope. So we'll cut that little piece right there out. And then like I said, the word Syracuse. Um, and I may even, I don't know, this might be too big. I'm definitely going to keep this for like another part of the journal that I'm working on. But um, as far as for this project, I think I'm going to cut that out. I'll still set it to the side. And But I'm mainly focusing on this word Syracuse because um, it's small enough that it won't overtake the look of the, um, the envelope, you know. Let's just cut this down. I may have to cut it down again, but we'll see. It's really fun when you just kind of use what you have and try to create something completely different from its original purpose or I guess I guess the best way to put it <laughs> so okay we have Syracuse it's kind of let me see if I can get it straight looks like it's just a little bit lopsided I don't know I think that'll work for now okay so now what we're gonna do is um, I'm still gonna save this because I can this is so pretty I'm still gonna save it because I can still add bits and pieces within the journal that I'm working on to just kind of accent the different pages and stuff. So, okay. Now, like I said, we're creating an envelope, right? So, we need one. Actually, I've got my scoring board. And what we're going to do is I need to go ahead and measure this. And then we're going to add, I want to make this like a gusseted pocket or envelope so okay look <laughs> I'm planning oops I'm planning this as we are 
creating. So let me fix my camera, guys. Sorry, I bumped into it. All right, so I'm gonna we're gonna make a gusseted um, envelope. So I'm just gonna put this over here, and we're gonna have half inch, another half inch. And then another half inch. Bear with me because it's been a minute since I've made a gusset. <laughs> so, okay. This is going to go like this. This will go like this. Because it's got to connect to the envelope. So this part's going to connect to the envelope. And then this is your gusset. Except for it's going to go like this. I need one more, one more little um, half inch. Okay. So every half inch all the way up to two inches. So you're going to basically add two inches on both sides of your object. Now your object might be a little bit different in size, meaning like your frame. Where did I just put my frame? Here it is. Okay, so I had to add two inches to this, to the frame. And then I'm going to do another set of two inches. So you're basically adding four inches to go around the frame for this particular project. Now your measurements may be a little bit different depending on how big your um, item is, your frame is. So every half inch. Okay. So now I'm going to cut this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. I'm going to get ready to cut this to fit the size of the frame. So I'm just going to cut on the line. Let me move this out of the way. I have clutter in here. So we're going to cut this on the scored line. Make sure I got lined up good. Okay. And then, okay, so this is gonna go vertical. So this measures, let's see how wide it is. Five and a half, so I need to cut this at five and a half. I just thought about something. Um, well, no, because I'm going to be stitching this together anyway, so that's fine. Um, okay, so let me move my blue paper out of the way. So, this is the actual envelope. It's going to have the gussets on it. And the frame is going to be going like this like so so our image I need to glue our image on here okay and if, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'm going to use some um, UHU glue stick and you can use whichever one you choose whatever type of glue you like and I'm just going to go ahead and glue the backdrop instead of instead of this I'm just going to glue this right here it's a whole lot easier because it's pretty much curving it up anyway so okay 
Okay, so we're going to add this on here. And try to line it up and center it as best we can. Now, if there's an overhang, we can always trim that. So I'm just going to trim that right there. And then there's a little bit of glue right here. So what we could do is um, just take a piece of the paper to cover up that glue. And um, it'll be fine because the frame is going to cover it up anyway. I just didn't want the glue there um, so that when you slide an object down, it won't like get caught up on there. But that's fine so far. So this is what we have so far, guys. Um, and this is just our gusset. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. The gusset goes inside. It goes inside in the middle. And we have that part. Guys, don't don't hate me for this because I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. Okay, it goes like that, and then like that, and then like this. There we go. We've got our little gusset. Okay, and then I, that should have been easy for me. I should have just known you just fold it right here, <laughs> and then this comes back up, and then this down, and then this back up. All right. So, and then we need a background page. And if you need to, if, you're, if your gusset looks like it's kind of coming outside the boundaries, you can still kind of slide it over. You can still adjust it a little bit. So when you go to put it on your back page, just kind of try to readjust it a little bit. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be the outer frame. And I want to kind of decorate this little outer frame a little bit. Um, maybe with a little bit of stamping. Um, I'm all over the place, guys. My stuff is... <laughs> My table is a hot mess. I'm, you know what? Hot mess. <laughs> hot mess. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of this script stamp on here. And I think I'm going to use a contrasting color. So we're just going to use some of this uh, Broken China, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Ink. And it's not going to be perfect. I'm just going to just add a little, little small, just dab it on there, you know. Dab on it. <laughs> okay. And I also want to add... A little bit of fabric to it on the sides and I'm going to be stitching this whenever I stitch um, the transparency film on here because we're going to cut us a little piece of transparency film to fit so I'm just going to cut like some old I think this used to be an old napkin or something that I had and then I'm just going to um, Glue it on. I'm gonna cut some of that down. Well, So I'm going to add the transparency film on here, and um, like I said, you can use you can use acetate or just use whatever you have. You know, I don't have any more acetate, so I have to use this. And basically, I'm just going to cut it down to size. So I get a little piece. And I got my transparency film off of Amazon, but um, I'm not an affiliate, so I don't. I'll leave the link in the description, but I'm not an affiliate, so 
you can click the link and I don't benefit from any of the sales of it. Okay, so let's just kind of eyeball the size. Actually, I should just go ahead and glue it on there first is what I should do. I'm just going to use some art glitter glue and glue this on. And I've already distressed everything, too. I've, I distressed, well, not everything. I distressed the frame, but I haven't distressed the envelope yet. Okay. So, and then I'm going to stitch. I think what I'll do, I'm just going to bring it to the end. Let's see here. This is going to go like that. And then we're just going to cut around it. I and think I'm going to go ahead and stitch on the sides. Um, yeah, let me see what it's going to look, gonna look like not. first with the fabric. Because I may not put the fabric on there. I don't know. Okay, yeah, we're just going to have scissors. some of it come out. Let me see. Okay, so we what have our like. little thing sewn on there. And um, so we just need the back of it. So if you remember when we, um, I use a sheet of 12 by 12 paper. And um, when I made the, what do you call it, marks? The, uh, I like to do that before I actually <laughs> put it on there. Because um, I made it to the it. size that we it pretty much need. Right. So now all I have to do... Uh, I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna I'm add it in. Anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and, and I'm just gonna, gonna have like a little one. flap on it. So um, I'm not gonna do the bottom yet because we gotta add our back. I part may use that the, flap or I may use something else. I'm gonna, gonna be let's right just back. go ahead and cut on the on the score marks. Let's cut that down because width wise that should be right. Now the height is what's gonna be a little bit off. So we're going to cut this, and this is going to be the back part of our envelope. And it should be wide enough, yeah, it's wide enough to where we can um, glue our pieces together. Well, almost wide enough. We can make adjustments. Okay, so... And what we would need to do is glue our gussets to it. And then this is going to be our flap. And then we need some type of closure. Oh, I got this turned around the wrong way. It'll go like this. Wait a minute. No, I had this turn. Okay, just like this. <laughs> oh, I was about to get nervous at first. Okay, so um, yeah, this will go like this. And this will come down. And then we'll need like maybe a little button or something. Um, I have an idea. I'm going to fold this over to where it meets in half and we're going to create like a designer flat this well if you want to call it that and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and just kind of get like a little circular piece going down so that when you fold it down you have this this kind of look so let's see what that's going to look like it has like a round kind of tab I think that's kind of cute what do you guys think all right, so we're going to do that, and and I chose um, a contrasting color up against the pink, and so you have like pinks and blues and like a greenish color in the backdrop, but it's it's dark enough to where it kind of highlights the inner part of this right here. So okay, we're that's what we're going to go with, and but before I do that, um, we do need 
something going right here. So okay, we're going to need so a closure here. I'm just going to take some here. of this or little circles of and brass. paper of the same color. But I also want to use. Well, it doesn't have to be white. Um, it has to be cream. So that's what we're going to use. This cream. It's something pretty. Thick. And I'm just going to cut. I have this little, little scallop punch, and I'm just going to cut like a few of those out, maybe four, and I'm going to glue them together. And then these are going to become our uh, what we're going to use for our closure. And it's a hundred. I know these are a hundred and ten piece uh, pound cardstock. These little, little pieces are. But um, now for your envelope, you can use whatever you can use sixty pound, hundred pound, however, whatever thickness you like. Depends on what you're planning on using your envelope for within your journal so we've got that okay and then let's just distress this a little bit I'm just rubbing this across the uh, ink pad you don't have to do that do it like that you can do it the proper way but <laughs> I don't I cheat <laughs> And just kind of rub it up against the thing and call it a day. Okay. That's good enough. Now what I also want to do is I have a little piece of this. Um, this was some vellum that I had colored. And I wanted to also take a little piece of it. I like, I like that blue that's on there. It's like a bluish green. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to glue, actually, I'm not going to glue it. Um, I'm going to put it on there and then I'm, but I will glue um, a piece of, uh, of this to it. Um, hold on. Where did I put my, I have like a little itty bitty, like a half inch circle punch. Okay, right here it is. And I'm just going to punch two little holes. And we're just going to glue those on. But um, the reason why I'm not going to glue this down is because I, I like the 3D kind of look. So um, I am going to glue this to it though in the center. That way we have like some of all the colors. We have like a greenish color and all that good stuff. I think that's kind of cute. And then I'm just going to poke a hole like in the center of each one of these. And I'm just going to use, um, just really be really careful. I'm just going to use um, this Ranger, uh, whatever it's called, tool. It's to help you when you use your dies and stuff, it helps you pick up or pick out the little, little small pieces and things like that. So if you do use this, be really careful. You could also use um, a hole punch or something like that, but I'm just going to use this or an awl or something. I'm trying to get it centered, but that one wasn't exactly centered the way I wanted it. So you just got to kind of eyeball it and get it. But you want to make sure it's wide enough for a brad to go through. So. Yeah, this isn't quite centered, but that's fine. And like I said, we're just going to put a brad in it. Well, we'll put a brad on one of them. Um, and then I will have to glue the other one on. So, okay, where did I put the cover? Okay, so this is going to go like 
let me just stress this part right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to punch a hole in the center of this. Hopefully, I'm just and I'm just eyeballing it. So, I'm hopefully I'm going to get it and get it right. We're going to place. I need to first get a piece of string because the string is what I'm going to be using to keep this together. And I think I'll use some wax string. I'm over here dropping stuff. So I'm going to use some of this leather wax thread from Fapito. That's what I use on my journals. And let's see what color. I think I want to use... I like this brown. We're just going to use this brown. And so I'm just going to take some. And I'm going to feed it through this hole first. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape right here to hold that in place. Some masking tape, uh, not masking tape, but uh, scotch tape. I like to make sure that it's going to stay secure and then I'm probably going to uh, cover it up also with something else but in the meantime I've got that there and we're going to go ahead and get our bread center this let's see where's that hole at grab our bread And push it on through there you may have to do it in layers so we'll just push it on through this part first and then we'll go through this and then we're going to go through this it'll go in there but the, the this is why I like to put my tape over the string so that it doesn't move and then we're going to um, fold it over and like I said I'm going to be covering this up I think I need to go ahead and do that first before I even put this down here and I will put a brad on there let me just let me go ahead and do that I will need a brad after all <laughs> I didn't think I was going to but yeah I will need one What I probably should have did as a tip, if you're going to be using the brad as your closure or, you know, a little button and brad combination, and you're going to do this, you should probably go ahead and put your brad on before you stitch around your edges. So I'm going to put this up far enough because remember, we're going to be stitching going down on this bottom. So I'm going to put this far enough up to where... Uh, We'll have room to stitch on the bottom, stitch our stuff together on the bottom. So I'm going to have to put the bread probably like right through here. So I'm just going to kind of poke like an area. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then I'm just going to take the, the little pokey tool in that little same area that I just poked and poke a hole. And then we're going to stick our little bread on in there. Hopefully it'll go in and we won't have any trouble. So far, so good. I'm just going to open it up. And there it is. And I like it. It'll work. Okay, so we've got that on there. And we've got this on here and it's going to be going... You know, 
like that or whatever. So now, like I said, I'm going to cover this up. And what I think I'll do is just put some pretty cardstock on there. Um, something that kind of matches. And I'm just going to get my glue, my UHU glue stick. And we're just going to go around the edges. And then um, we're just going to glue it on there. I'm going to try to get it to the edge. And then I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to cut around the edges. But this also kind of reinforces the uh, closure or the flap. It makes it a little bit more stronger. So, okay. I want to cut around here. Where the glue stops at, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to cut it right there. I'm just going to cut this, but make sure you don't cut your string by accident after you've already put it in there and went through all that. I think I'm going to stitch going around the edges just to make sure that that stays on there like it's supposed to. Yeah. And then I'll uh, distress around it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got that stitched on there. Um, it seems to be pretty secure. So, um, now... <laughs> I want to do things in true Tanya Samuels fashion because she does a lot of flips and tucks and hidden spots and all sorts of fun things that go in her journals. So um, I want to make this into like a little slip as well because this will go into a journal. So I'm going to add a bottom part on here and then this that way um, it can flip going down. Uh, yeah, it'll flip going down. And then we'll have something here. So, what I will need is, I need to put something on this back part. Now, keep in mind, um, we have several things that we had cut out earlier from the page. So, and my first original idea was to use it on this outer part, which I still may use, like the Syracuse, I might put that on there on the front, along with um, maybe even this little flower or something. We'll see. But um, on this back part now, when it flips, it's gonna come down like that. So we'll need, I'll probably do like some side pockets coming out, maybe one side pocket. Or tuck spots. We could make this into a tuck. I think that's what I'll do. We'll make that into a tuck. Um, we'll see.
but we'll need to do that first before we add our little hinge. Or no, I'm going to add our hinge first. So, like I said, it's going to be a flip. So you want to keep in mind what we're going to need. So this is going to go like so. So we're going to have our hinge down here. So let me get my scoring board back out. And um, let's see if I don't knock everything down first. So I need something that is the size of four and three quarters wide. And let's see, four and three quarters wide. three quarters I usually don't use this because I don't know it, it doesn't it never really worked too good from the very first time I got it that's why I used like a separate trimmer and scoring board I've literally only used this trimmer maybe I'll say 10 times the whole time I've had it and it just I don't know I don't like how it does it doesn't do right yeah it just doesn't do right Anyway, so we've got our four and three quarters inch wide to fit our um, for our hinge, and so now we're gonna score it at half inch, going across. So let me make sure I'm in frame. So we have our half inch, another half inch, another half inch. Another half inch, another half inch. That should be enough because um, you're going to have the part that's going to connect to this bottom. Let me take just a little smidgen off of here, like of the flip. Let me just move the scoreboard out of the way. I'm just going to take, because it's just a, a hair too wide, I'm just going to take like a sixteenth of an inch off, roughly. Just a little itty bitty. Okay. So, this is going to connect to this bottom. So, we're just going to fold that, fold this, fold that, and then fold this. We really might not need all of this. So this is going to be going under here, connected to it. And so, let me just open it up so we can see what we got going on. This is going to get connected to this. And it's going to be opening up. So I think I need the glue. Yeah, I need to glue these two together. And this is what's going to be um, going back and forth. Or no, this goes, how does this go? What I actually could do, I'm just going to go ahead and first glue on our hinge. Just going to go ahead and glue it on. And then I'll be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to open this up and go ahead and add on our hinge. So this is going to get connected. I might have to turn the hinge the other way. But, um... We've got that. And like I said, um, it's going to be flipping up and down. So this is going to come down. So, yeah, this flips down like that. It's a flap. Okay. 
Well, I really only needed just these two. I didn't need a whole lot, I guess. But what I think I'm going to do to reinforce this, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take some of this off. I only needed just one inch, and then I could have just... Um, only need it one inch yeah so you just have one inch score it in half connect one inch here and I want to reinforce this to make it strong so that it doesn't like tear when you're flipping it open and I'm just gonna add some washi tape to it and you can use Tyvek I've seen different people use different things there's a lot of different things you can even use just regular plain um, scotch tape would even actually work to stop it from like cracking in the middle you know as you're opening and closing your flaps you know so but I'm just going to use some washi tape but I want my washi tape to stay on good so I'm just going to use some glue some wet glue and I'm just going to take some random washi tape I guess I use this um I like this it's got the it's like a print like a vintage style print on it so we'll use it and I'm gonna use it on both sides so that when you open up your flap you'll see this pretty print I could stitch it on but I'm not gonna do that so let me just cut this going straight across that way we don't have like jagged edges and I'm just going to cut that off we've got that part And then I'm going to put a little bit on here too as well. But I'll probably get like a smaller piece of um, a thinner piece of washi. Well, no, I can use the same size. It's fine. I just want to make sure that it's not going to cover up, um, it's not going to go past the frame because we don't want that part to show. So I'm just going to cut like a little piece that's roughly about that size. And just go ahead and add it on here. I'm going to lift this up. If I'd have thought about it, I should have, um, should have did this first before I put the frame on. But I didn't, so hindsight, it's 2020. <laughs> but this still works. And even with that little blue right there showing, that's fine. Because what we could do, is we can just come on in here and at the corner. Kind of the way we do with our envelopes. And we're just going to make it look like it's supposed to be like that. Just kind of cut it right there. That'll work. It's not perfect, but it'll do, you know. All right, and these are going to get glued down to our um, journals. So I'll leave that part out. And so, like I said, like I said in true Tiny Sam's fashion. We're going to do something to this back part, so we're going to add like a, um, I guess a side pocket. That's what we'll do. We'll keep it real simple. Um, I'm trying to think. Do I want, that's too much pink. We want something that's a little bit, uh, maybe something with brown in it. Um, actually... I'm going to use another one of her papers. Um, let me put this tape up.
Okay, so I'm not sure. These right here, there's a combination of um, three of her digitals. In My Dreams, Love Notes, and Memories. So I'm not sure which one is which. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to take one of these and I'm going to use it as a um, background page. Let's see. I need something that kind of con that's some contrast and has a contrast in color. I can't even talk straight. Um, I like this right here. We'll use this. Um, well, look at that. That's almost like a perfect size. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do, because this was just going to be a journal page, I'm just going to go, and it's already folded it over. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this over to about right here. And I'm going to cut it down. And we're going to have a triple pocket, or a double pocket, actually. Yeah, a double pocket. And let's see, let me just straighten that out a little bit. She usually has jagged edges on hers, which is, I like that too. But for time purposes, I'm just going to cut it going straight across. And then I'm also going to open this up and we're going to take a circle punch. And we're just going to take this little tab, this little old piece out of there. Because this is going to be a pocket. And then I'm going to put this on here. And then behind here is also going to be a pocket. So we're going to have a bunch of pockets. So, so I'm going to stress um, this. And then some um, paper, some what I'm going to do is I'm going to just music sheet. stress and all this. I just this. glued it on here. And I'm going and to basically all I want to do is just glue stitch this it together. Onto some blue fabric. And then glue it on here. And then right I'm going to glue it to our... Um, I want to glue it to our back of the folder or whatever. So let me do that right quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to, I've already went on ahead and um, I added our pocket. Um, well, this is a pocket down in here and then this is a pocket down in here. So, and then of course, a pocket that's like right here and so now we want to go ahead and get ready to assemble this together so I'm probably going to stitch around or stitch like down in here I'll stitch our gussets together first And then, um, after I stitch our gussets, then I'll stitch the bottom part, making sure that when I do stitch, that I leave this, uh, this little flap out, because we don't want that in there. So I'm, I'll stitch the gussets, and then we'll stitch going across with this left out. And I will be right back. Okay, so we've got this together. And uh, like I said, it's going to flip down. So when it, whenever it flips down, you're going to have this pocket right here. Oh, you know what I did? <laughs> Without realizing it when I stitched on my gussets. <laughs> I stitched this together, but you guess what we're going to do. You're going to take this apart little by little in the front. Well, I'll get that in a little bit. But anyway, we're going to be having a pocket here. And then, of course, you know, our pocket that's down in here. And then our pocket that's right in here. And then, um, you know, it flips. So, but one thing that I don't like is when I go to close this up, it's too far up. So, I'm going to take a chance. I hope I don't mess this up, guys. But um, just remember when you're assembling yours, you want to have room up here for your closure because you don't want it to, like, crinkle up this part right here. 
So, oh goodness. I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to cut a little bit of this off going straight across. Hopefully I'm not going to mess it up, but I don't know. I just need to take a little bit, take some of this down. I will improvise in a minute <laughs> when things aren't going correctly I will make up some rules and we're gonna fix it we're gonna, I'm gonna try to fix it to where it does work I may have to use these small scissors to get to these small hard to reach areas I think that helps it a little bit yeah, it's a little, it helps a little bit. It's still not down quite far enough. I'm going to take it down just a little bit more. And notice I'm cutting pieces of the gusset with it too. I'm just going to take that down just a little bit more. Because the gussets are just as tall. But I don't want to take it down too far to where this part and this part looks like way off as far as in width. So I'm showing you guys this because that comes with the territory. Sometimes we don't always do things right. So I want to show you the process, the struggle. This is the struggle right here. So we're going to work through this. As best we can without trying to without making too much of a mess I think I can live with that right there yeah and then you know of course we'll bring this like that okay so now that we have that let's um, start some decorating and what I went on ahead and did was I I glued on our little extra pieces I glued it to some brown cardstock and I'm this is just to reinforce it and make it a little bit tougher stronger than what it is and I'm just gonna fussy cut it out and it doesn't have to be perfect it's just just enough to kind of um, make it to where it doesn't tear up I typically I always back all of my images when I'm layering I like to do, and, I'm, and I'm fussy cutting a lot of images to add on my uh, in, my product my projects products <laughs> I like to um, back up my fussy cut items to make sure they're not gonna fall apart because sometimes they're kind of thin and the paper that I had this printed out when I had this um, some of these I think I had printed out at Staples and some of them I printed out at home. But the ones at Staples I think was 120 pound cardstock. I think that's what it was. So it wasn't quite as thick. But anyway. So we've got that. And then our Syracuse. I'm going to leave a little bit, bit of that brown showing. We're going to slide this over here. And I think I will do, like I said, I'm just going to put that up here. Let me get my uh, glue. If I can find where I put it at. We'll use this one. And you can use... Uh, double-sided tape or you could even use uh, 3d foam if you like but I'm just going to keep this flat so we're just going to put that there I like that Syracuse and then I think I'm gonna put this right here I don't know should I put it back here I think I'm gonna 
gonna put it back here like um yeah i'm gonna put it back here and let this be like a tuck spot kind of sort of yeah so we'll put some glue here here and here and um i didn't put glue up through there because i didn't want it to um take up too much space so that when you put something in it'll fit down pretty well so yeah because this side needed some pink so i like that right there and i didn't want to overdo it on this side so um yeah it's kind of plain it's not as jazzy as Tanya's are. <laughs> Hers are always just awesome, super awesome. And then I'm just going to find some ephemera to put in here. And then it can go inside of a book, a journal. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. So if you enjoyed it, um, this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, uh, please check out my other videos on my blog and social media sites. And... Um, as always, I thank you guys so much for watching.